for your what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants video. And this video uh, is kind of going to be a little uh, talking about Daniel Jones. And well, before I get into that, first things first, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. Hope you guys are staying safe and washing your hands. Um, if you guys live in the Minnesota area or anything like that, I hope you are staying physically safe and that uh, you and your family is okay. I really, I don't want to like get into that topic. I don't like to talk politics too much on the channel. It's a very divisive thing. But all I can say to everybody watching is that I hope you guys are doing your best to stay safe. Um, you know, physically, mentally, you know, all that things. Uh, keep your health in check and all that. Um, now with that out the way, um, I'm gonna be doing a bit of live streaming this week on the channel you know so a little bit of announcements before we get to the actual vid um a little bit of live streaming i'm gonna be doing the madden stream episode three i want to get a q a live stream done obviously there's gonna be the live stream i do with kid blue with for our new series uh whose name is yet to be decided of course i have a poll up on the channel uh i'll converse with kid blue probably on stream and then we'll announce the name of the new thing right now big blue talking crew is the winning name for the new series that we're going to be running every Tuesday. So on Tuesday night, of course, I'll be running that with Kid Blue. Um, on Friday, I'll be on OGR's channel uh, for his new Big Blue Courtroom uh, series, his new podcast series. I'll be on there. And in general, I'm probably going to have a couple more live streams here and there this week in the channel. I'll have a schedule out to you guys. I'll actually release like a schedule that I'm making both to keep myself in check and remind myself when the times are happening and to give you guys a heads up. And in general, I'm kind of trying to establish my presence, um, you know, with streaming a bit more to establish my presence as a YouTuber that actually streams a bit more so that I can get you guys in the streams uh, more often rather than having like maybe one guy in there or something. And I want to I want to just establish the presence because I'm going to be doing a lot more streaming in this off season right now where there's not that much to talk about. Where it's, it's honestly more fun and you guys bring up a lot more ideas and interesting takes on things in the live streams than I would do right now where there's not that much, you know, reports or rumors or stories to talk about relating to the Giants. Now with all of that out the way, <laughs> basically spend the first two and a half minutes on announcements. Um, Let's get into Daniel Jones. So in the past couple of days, I've noticed a couple of reports, you know, coming up about DJ, you know, a couple of articles popping up here and there talking about our boy and how he's going to take a step forward in year two and what we should expect from him and even you know on good morning football uh this wasn't a couple of days ago i think this was maybe in the past two weeks or so with listen it's success for daniel jones win the division it's, it's that simple you have to win the division at the bare basement in fact let's just get into it guys daniel dan jones in the second year if we're all paying attention second year you basically if you're not like winning mvp in the super bowl and nobel peace prize is like you ain't doing squat Second year guys, Mahomes won his division. Lamar won his division. Goff won his division. I'll keep going. Second year, Carson Wentz did it. Mitch Trubisky did it. Everybody's doing it. All the cool kids are doing it. So you had your nice little warm up year and you had that fun day against Tampa and everybody oohed and odd and everything. Now it's time to really win. That's today's NFL. Al Brandt saying that Daniel Jones, we should expect him to take the Giants to the playoffs as has been the trend for second year quarterbacks in the past like four or five years in the NFL and anything less than that would be a failure. And I did touch upon that on my stream with OGR um, last night, which was a great stream, by the way, you guys should go check it out. Um, and basically everybody is now placing really high expectations on Daniel Jones. And I'm just sitting back wondering whether or not it's fair to do so. So before I actually give my opinion on that and ask you guys your opinion, let's get into two articles that I spotted that are really kind of added fuel to the fire. And these are from two guys that have weight in the NFL world and their opinion on Daniel Jones. The first person of this is, of course, David Cutliffe, Daniel Jones's coach at Duke. And also, obviously, the coach for Peyton Manning that helped get Peyton where he is. And then the coach at Ole Miss for Eli Manning to help get Eli where he is. We're obviously hoping that with that type of pedigree and Cutcliffe is known as one of the best, you know, quarterback uh, guys in the in the game, you know, in the college game for translating guys from college to the NFL. We're hoping Daniel Jones has similar careers to Peyton and Eli, two of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play it. In a nutshell, David Cutcliffe says that he expects to see a big leap from DJ in year two. 
Now this article here is from Giants.com, straight out of Giants website. I'll link it down below so you guys can check it out. And here are some quotes from the man himself. He says, I think we will see a much better Daniel Jones. I think he's going to be a much better product than what he was a year ago. And of course, he's correct, as is kind of the natural order of things. I do kind of agree with, and of course, I've even said. So I do strongly believe in the fact that Jones is going to take a leap forward in year two. I've said it a bunch of times. I even said it in my uh, why Daniel Jones is going to break out in 2020 video that it's kind of a natural setting for the quarterbacks, this current breed of quarterbacks coming into the NFL. The way they're trained and the way they're built physically and mentally in college now is that they don't need to be sat, you know, when they come into the NFL. You don't see quarterbacks sitting that much anymore is because they don't need to. They're a lot better prepared than QBs coming out like, say, 10 years ago. And in fact, they get more of their experience now by playing the game and they make their mistakes their rookie year as they should. That's why their rookie year is there for, their, for them to experiment and make their mistakes. And year two, what we've seen the past couple of years now with Carson Wentz, um, his year two in 2017, uh, Mitch Trubisky's year two in 2018, even though Trubisky is kind of a bust now. Of course, uh, what's his name? Oh my God, his name slipped my mind. Patrick Mahomes is year two in 2018. Lamar Jackson in 2019. And you could go on and on with even more quarterbacks from each of those years. They take a nice leap forward in their second year because they work with their coaches in the offseason to correct the mistakes that they uh, made in their rookie year. And once again, they come in extremely prepared. So once those mistakes are corrected, they're already at that starting caliber QB that can take their uh, team to the playoffs. Now, of course, all those teams that I just listed, I mean, or all those quarterbacks I just listed were on teams that were already built to go to the playoffs. Of course, Wentz with the Eagles in 2017, they were the Super Bowl champions. Uh, Trubisky with the Bears, that Bears defense did a lot of work in that offseason and were, were at that point a Super Bowl caliber defense. Uh, Mahomes with the Chiefs, I mean, Alex Smith was taking them to the playoffs, so Mahomes only needed to be as good as Smith to repeat that. And Jackson with the Ravens, the Ravens for like the past 20 years have always been a mainstay in the playoffs. And well, yeah, that's about it. So I do agree with uh, Cutcliffe here, getting back to the quote that he will take a uh, step forward in year two and he's going to be better than what he was. Continue on, and he's now he's talking about Jason Garrett. He says, I know Jason a little bit. I think the world of him. He'll do a great job with Daniel. I think Jason and Daniel are kind of similar people. Really smart, analytical people. I think they're going to be a good pair. I sat with Jason and Tony Romo before and talked football, and I saw his approach to coaching Tony Romo and the relationship they had. That's why I'm making the assumption that I'll see a similar relationship between Jason and Daniel. And in terms of the relationship to the QB part, uh, I, this is something I never thought about before. I always thought, of course, Jason Garrett being the offensive coordinator and what he did with Tony Romo, an undrafted player, and Dak Prescott, a fourth round pick, what he did to them as quarterbacks and what he did for their careers as quarterbacks, I expect him to do even better things with Daniel Jones, a first round pick and somebody that was worthy of that sixth overall pick. I expect him to do even better things with Daniel Jones with the, the type of offense that Jason Garrett implements and just how good of a quarterback coach he is. The relationship part is something that slipped my mind. And that is true. We knew that Jason Garrett and Tony Romo had a really close relationship. And to an extent, him and Dak Prescott had a really close relationship. That's only going to help, you know, DJ learn more and be more comfortable with his coach. And that's a really good point that Cutcliffe brought up. He then also talks about what Daniel is doing. He says, trust me, he's working 10 hours a day on his own mastering this. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody more eager. He's every bit the worker that Payton and Eli were their entire careers. I think he's really starting to understand what they're expecting or what they want to do offensively and that he'll and that'll help him be successful in this transition. Of, of course, he's talking about both the transition to a new offense and the weird offseason we have right here. And if DJ is really working 10 hours a day, you know, studying film, doing what he can in the weird offseason that we are stuck in right now to improve his game and getting with Jason Garrett, with Joe Judge, with uh, Shaplinski to get this offense down and get his quarterbacking up, then I expect nothing but great things from Daniel Jones next year. He's putting in the work and he's he has the tools necessary on the offensive side to have a great year. And another person that believes this, or at least holds a very similar position and opinion, is uh, former Giants quarterbacks Phil Sims, his son Chris Sims. I know I kind of baited y'all a little bit with the former Giants quarterback uh, intro piece to it, but of course Chris Sims, he's uh, he's considered an NFL quote-unquote expert and whatnot. 
being that he is a former quarterback in the NFL, uh, you know, has his connections all over the place, but he does do his job in scouting and all that. Chris Sims was blown away by DJ last year. And he even went as far to say in an interview that he was better than anybody else on the team last year, that Daniel Jones was the MVP of the Giants and it's not even close. I'll throw up the quote. And here's his reasoning. It's a bunch of receivers that were really good, not great. I would say Darius Slayton is probably the most dangerous one of the group. Saquon Barkley wasn't 100%. That offensive line was solid, not great. We know the defense was nothing special either. I mean, Daniel Jones was asked a lot on a weekly basis. For a rookie quarterback with not a lot of talent around him, they were basically asking him, hey Daniel, we need you to throw the ball 40 times. You're probably going to have to throw four touchdowns and no more than one interception if we want to win a football game. That's basically what it came down to. And on some level, that is true, of course. And Daniel did complete that on a few occasions. Uh, three, what, three, five touchdown games with no interceptions. Uh, Detroit, Redskins, and I'm probably forgetting another one. Uh, but that is true to some extent, not completely but to some extent. And of course, with the additions to the offensive line and improving that offensive line that year, uh, Chris expects him to also take a step forward. And like he said, it was a really good receiving group with a hampered Saquon Barkley, not a great weapon choice for DJ. Uh, he expects him to basically be the MVP of the team again this year. Now, what I, I'm gonna go back to what I said in the beginning of the video. I expect DJ to take a step forward and I expect him to have a great year because of what we have on the offensive side, but I'm not expecting playoffs from him because of what's happening on the other side of the ball on the defensive side. And now that's what I'm gonna ask you guys. What do you think about this? Um, Kind of going back to the Kyle Brandt thing that I also mentioned where Kyle Brandt is saying Daniel Jones should make the playoffs next year going back on the trend of second year quarterbacks and his performance in his rookie year, what he's going to be given his second year, would it be a failure if the Giants don't make the playoffs under the leadership of Daniel Jones? I don't think so because the defense need works, but what do you guys think? And I'm out. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.